Hi, I'm Azra, a clinical form registrar at St. Mary's. So we're going to talk about uh, appropriate prescribing on the acute medical unit. I'm going to talk about the problem. I'm going to show you some data. I'm going to give you some challenges to deprescribing and appropriate prescribing on the acute medical unit, the ongoing work that we're doing at St. Mary's, and potential solutions. So what's the problem? I'm going to start off with the fact that at St. Mary's Hospital, we run a firm-based system. So each firm is a specialty that takes in acute medical patients on the acute medical take. They then come onto the first floor, which is our acute medical unit, and they stay under that firm for the entire duration while they are on the first floor. When they move to downstream wards, they go to a specialty that takes care of the firm. So this is a snapshot of a group of patients admitted to the acute medical ward. It's a single day in the hospital, and don't be surprised at numbers. We follow them during the entire course of their admission, so not only in the acute medical unit, so some got discharged from the acute medical unit, some went to downstream ward, so entire uh, stay in the hospital. We looked at the number of drugs they were admitted with, the number of drugs on discharge, and these are not acute prescriptions, so not antibiotics, not steroids, not acute prescriptions, just everything that they were discharged with. Looked at whether or not a review of medications was carried out in the hospital, and because we are a specialty-based, uh, firm-based system, we looked at what specialty was looking after the patient. So patient demographics and characteristics, please be aware this is St. Mary's Hospital. It's only a total of 36. Our acute medical ward is not as large as some other places. So a total of 36 patients, about 50% female, 50% male, so you know, equal numbers. The mean age in our acute medical unit on that particular day was only 65. The median number of comorbidities were three. The median number of meds on admission was six. On discharge was seven. The median frailty score was zero, so these are not frail patients. And the median length of stay was four days. So that's the entire admission, not only on the acute medical unit. So what did the data show? Actually, there was a correlation between the number of comorbidities and the number of medications on admission for all of our patients. Right, so this has not been shown on the acute medical unit. So it's very similar to what we know we hear about. There's also a correlation between the frailty and the number of medications that somebody is admitted with. Again, something you hear about, but this, this is actually data. There's also a correlation between previous admissions and the number of medications, which, if you think about it, would make complete sense because people who have got more comorbidities tend to have more admissions. People who are frailer have more admissions. As a result, you would have more medications. <coughs> but the one thing that did surprise us was that there was no correlation between age and the number of medications on admission. So this is something, you know, we have a cohort of uh, around median age of 65. Now, this is the whole point. What is happening in the acute medical uh, unit on admission and on discharge, purely at looking at me uh, medications? I know this is a very confusing graph, so bear with me, and I'm going to take you through this, if my pointer works, yes. So, these are all the patients on admission, the medications on admission, and this is the same patients on discharge. The mean number of medications, I think you saw this on admission, was six, on discharge was seven, so all patients. Then look at the green bits here. We divided the patients into those who were on zero to four drugs, five to nine drugs, and more than 10 drugs on admission looked at these patients on discharge. Those who are on zero to four drugs on admission, 
they, are, they were admitted on, on average two drugs. On discharge, they were discharged with three drugs, an increase. These are not acute prescriptions, not antibiotics, not steroids. Those who are on five to nine drugs on admission, the mean number of uh, drugs on admission for them were around seven. On discharge, they were discharged with a mean number of eight drugs, again, increase. The ones who are on more than 10 drugs, the mean number of those who were, or, of drugs that this group were on was actually 15. And they were discharged on 13 drugs. So if we look at this, it looks like for this group of patients, on the red ones, we are doing the right thing. There are a lot of drugs, we are focusing, and we are deprescribing. But it is this group here, the green and the blue, which now looks like purple, anyway, uh, the green and the blue, where is it that we are not actually focusing on this group? Especially this middle group, we are already hitting the polypharmacy range that we are actually sending. Maybe it's because we are focusing mainly on those. So we're looking at that. So what are the challenges we face? So at St. Mary's Hospital, and I'm sure a lot of hospitals all throughout the country, there's such a quick turnaround on the acute medical wards. You've got a high throughput of patients coming, they're being discharged. Frequently, bed capacity issues, this can't be only a Mary's thing, it's all over the place. And Having spoken to pharmacists, speaking to the medical teams, you find out actually that when people come in on Dosset Box, if it's not a clinically concerning medication, you need to get them out. Dosset Box takes time to a new one to make, so, you know, GP can review. That's always something I'm sure it rings through with all of you. Also, there's also a concern that stopping a medication will ca cause harm, and that was in the first talk, and I was like, oh, wow, okay. And this is there, it's a real concern amongst all clinicians. There's also a lack of overall expertise in deprescribing and appropriate prescribing. In terms of the medical staff, so once again, junior, uh, doctors. So I was going to say junior doctors, but actually it's both junior and senior. They just don't feel comfortable stopping medication. Well, I um, don't want to know about that. And it's also, this is an acute medical unit. This is an acute setting. So it's a very short time that you know the patient for. Although at St. Mary's we have a consultant input twice a day, the acute issues that have brought the patient into the hospital are prioritized over medication reviews. And finally, we are a firm-based system, we have a number of specialities, and there are going to be differences in the opinions of different specialities on what medications should stop and what medications shouldn't and who you should get advice from. Or no, the renal physician started that, let's not touch it. That kind of thing. And finally, from the pharmacy staff point of view, we have a a pharmacist who joins us on the post-take ward round and the trust guideline and the trust kind of uh, benchmark is all medicines should be re reconciled within 24 hours. They are busy reconciling medications for these patients and they do not have time to do medication reviews. So what are we doing in the meantime? We are collecting more data, 36 patients is not enough. We are collecting up to 100 patients data and looking at what are the exact drugs that added, we saw that apart from that last group of patients, we've got drugs being added, which are not acute prescriptions. What are being added? I mean, just as a snapshot, and I don't have the actual data on it, mainly you've got laxatives, <laughs> you've got painkillers, and a lot of PPIs. And then looking at 30 days post-discharge, are the patients on exactly the same drugs that they were discharged with, or you know something has gone wrong and the GP just keeps on giving them the repeat prescriptions despite what was stopped? So we are looking at that data. And finally, there's no point in us stopping drugs if the GPs don't know about it. We are, you know, we have a snapshot view. What about GPs? They need to know. We're finding out. I individually calling GPs and finding out. Did you get that information? 
What mode did you get that information? Have you acted upon it? So what are the potential solutions? I had to say this. Come on. So would there be a specialist team in the acute medical unit? You know, a clinical pharmacologist. Not in charge of the patient, but having such a good overview of medication, interactions, side effects, and also the evidence based behind it. We do need a clo closer links with the pharmacists and the wider MDT. Education, we're already in the process of um, talking to F1s, doing weekly prescribing sessions where we're not only talking about prescri prescribing, but giving them an idea about de-prescribing and basically adverse drug reactions. And ensuring communication between electronic systems. I hear this is the word at the moment, interoperability between secondary and primary care. So, you know, we've, we've got an electronic system at, at Imperial, and we know the GPs have an electronic system. We need to communicate so that any drug changes are made are communicated to them effectively and in the long term. And finally, a review post-discharge. Could this be a solution? And Fran's going to talk about that. So hopefully I've given you an idea about what the problem is on the acute medical unit, the data we've collected, the challenges we face for deprescribing and appropriate prescribing, the ongoing work that we're doing, and potential solutions. Thank you.